Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today we are going to be continuing our discussion on the upcoming product, The Return to the Dunwich Legacy, by further investigating the chaos in the Clover Club. In the most recent article posted by Fantasy Flight Games, we are given more information about the Return to the House Always Wins scenario, along with newly spoiled encounter cards. In this video we will go over the substance of that article, the new cards, as well as give you my overall thoughts and impressions. In the original scenario, the house always wins, the investigators enter the Clover Club, Arkham's local speakeasy, in search of Dr. Francis Morgan, professor of archaeology at Miskatonic University, with the hopes of gaining his aid. I personally liked this scenario. The feeling of dread as you explore the dark corners of the club comes through well in the mechanics, as well as the story this scenario tells. While I enjoy this scenario, it's not very challenging when compared to other introductory scenarios like Curtain Call. While returning to the Clover Club may look familiar at first glance, not all is as it seems. The first newly spoiled card is an alternate location, the Clover Club Lounge. This new lounge has four shroud, comes into play with zero clues, and is connected to La Bella Luna, Clover Club Bar, the Clover Club Card Room, as well as one new symbol. It has an ability that states, Forced. After Clover Club Lounge is revealed, put the set-aside Clover Club stage into play. While it is Act 1, Clover Club Lounge gains an action that reads, Look at the top card of your deck. If it is an ally asset, you may put it into play. Otherwise, draw it. Limit once per round. Already, we can see changes to this scenario. This alternate lounge brings with it a new location to investigate, while also staying on theme with the original lounge. The action on this location that can be taken while in Act 1 is essentially a souped-up draw action. Being able to place an ally down without paying its resource cost makes that especially powerful. While this location is great for getting cards into your hand, it doesn't provide the investigators with clues to advance the act deck, or a means of collecting clues like the original Clover Club Lounge. Without seeing the new stage, it may prove difficult for the investigators to gain the necessary clues they need to find Dr. Morgan in time. They may just need to raise the stakes. Raise the Stakes is a new treachery card that has the illicit traits and an effect that reads, Revelation. You must choose one. Remember that you have cheated, lose five resources, or put Raise the Stakes into play in your threat area. It gains. Each criminal enemy at your location loses aloof. If it is Act 2 or 3, each criminal enemy engaged with you gets plus one fight and plus one evade. This new treachery certainly lives up to its namesake. Having to choose which one of these effects you'll have to endure will largely depend on the type of investigator that you're playing. Losing 5 resources might not be the end of the world for someone playing a Dark Horse deck, or slightly buffing up weak enemies can be overcome pretty easily by decks tailored for combat. The option to cheat, while not being an immediate detriment to the scenario, can have far-reaching consequences further down the road for the investigators. If you choose to cheat, make sure you are not caught. Caught Cheating is the other new treachery card introduced in this Return to Scenario article. This card has the illicit trait, the Surge keyword, and has an effect that reads, Revelation. Each player who has cheated must lose two resources and take one damage. In the original scenario, if an investigator decided to cheat, there is no consequence in this scenario for doing so, often leading to more cheating. This card being in the encounter deck brings more meaningful choice on whether or not an investigator should press their luck, especially when accompanied with other party members. The surge keyword is the salt in the wound. Having to face another card from the encounter deck can mean one of O'Bannon's thugs has come to rough you up. Old enemies, however, can become new allies. The last card we're going to talk about in this video is Naomi O'Banion, Ruthless Tactician. She is a 5 cost asset with 2 intellect and 2 might skill icons. She has the ally, criminal, and syndicate traits, and takes up the ally slot. Naomi has 3 health and 3 sanity, and has a passive ability that states, You get plus 1 intellect and plus 1 might. Naomi also has a reaction that reads, When an investigator at your location reveals a non-auto-fail chaos token during an intellect or might skill test, exhaust Naomi O'Banion. Cancel that chaos token, and reveal a new chaos token. For the remainder of this test, if another copy of the cancelled chaos token is revealed, cancel it and reveal a new chaos token. One thing I want to mention before I review this card is the set symbol in the top left appears to be the return to where doom awaits scenario. From this, and implications made in the article, I think it's safe to say where doom awaits will be receiving large changes to the scenario. 
Moving on to Naomi herself, she is quite a formidable ally. While expensive at 5 resources, Naomi is well worth the cost. Providing you a boost to both intellect and might makes passing skill tests easier while also providing the game's best chaos bag manipulation to date. While Seal of the Elder Sign can turn any test into an Elder Sign, it comes at the price of 5 XP and can only be used once per scenario. Naomi being able to assist investigators at your location every turn to make sure they gather up the clues they need and to take care of the threats that may come along. With 3 health and 3 sanity, Naomi also soaks up a decent amount of damage to boot. No, not that boot. Before closing out this video, I briefly want to mention the new ultimatums in Mission. The ultimatum of failure, the ultimatum of broken promises, and remind me not to piss her off. The ultimatum of failure adds an additional auto-fail token to the chaos bag, while the ultimatum of broken promises removes the elder sign from the chaos bag altogether. One of these alone might not be too hard, but together sound like a real challenge. Lastly, the new mission revealed, remind me not to piss her off, tasks the investigators with defeating Seth Bishop while accompanied by Naomi O'Banion. The article hints that this may prove to be more difficult than the first encounter, and that Bishop may be the least of your problems. If Naomi considers you a liability, she may give you the boot. Yes, that boot. With new locations yet to be revealed, new treacheries to endure, as well as a powerful new ally, this article has me ready to retrace the steps of the Dunwich Legacy. I want to hear from you though. Are you excited to see the Clover Club stage? What do you think of the new encounter cards? Does Naomi's artwork creep you out? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more Arkham-related content.